All right, well, I'd like to thank you for attending this webinar on ICD-10 and the Smartsheet 10 technology. I think what you're going to find is that this technology is truly a solution above and beyond others, a solution that will almost make October 1st of 2015 fail-safe uh, for users who might not even know uh, ICD-10 the way that they should. It's literally going to deliver you right to the most specific ICD-10 code and it can be integrated into any electronic health record. Right now it is certainly the crown jewel and the biggest value proposition of TrackNet 3.0. It is integrated into TrackNet 3.0. So we're going to go through this first with just a brief introduction of ICD-10 so that you thoroughly understand the differences between ICD-9 and what makes ICD-10 so challenging. There is no question in my mind, at least, that October 1st, 2015 is going to represent one of the greatest changes that any living physician has ever gone through. We are revolutionizing the diagnostic codes for physicians and it is going to be single-handedly the biggest change physicians have ever gone through. So let's just get started by talking first about what is ICD-10 and what does it represent. It is not going to affect are procedural codes for outpatient uh, services. It is not going to affect our procedure codes. It's going to affect our medical diagnoses, and I'm strictly speaking about outpatient services. So people often ask me, well, are the modifiers on our claims going to change? Remember, modifiers are linked to CPT codes, not ICD-9 codes. So everything that's related to ICD-9 is going to change to ICD-10, but nothing related to the CPT codes. Some of the broad differences between ICD-9 and ICD-10. ICD-9 is numeric characters, with a few exceptions, of course, and they generally are three to five characters in length. And there's about 13,000 ICD-9 codes. Come October 1st, we're moving to alpha numeric characters, three to seven characters in length, and you'll see some of the challenges that are associated with this unique seventh character that some codes have. And you'll also see how the Smartsheet technology mitigates that for you. And there's going to be about 68,000 codes in ICD-10. So you could imagine how selecting the most specific code is going to be a rather daunting task, again, mitigated by the technology, and how not selecting the most specific code is likely going to set you up for a claim rejection. So think about those claim rejections and the impact and the effect that it's going to have on your cash flow. And this is why even the government has been recommending that physicians and medical organizations have enough capital reserves or credit lines on hand to be able to sustain themselves in the event of these cash flow crises. I'm not going to bore you with the 21 chapters of ICD-10, but suffice it to say that one way that a medical facility can look up codes is the traditional way of searching through books. And there are 21 chapters of the ICD-10 books. Think, if you will, about the enormous investment and resources that would take to be having to search through these chapters, finding the proper code so that you're not getting a rejection. Some other differences that are affected as we move to ICD-10 are things like laterality. Now the side of the body, particularly in certain specialties, the side of the body being affected is important. And injuries are grouped by anatomical sites rather than the type of injury. And there's a whole host of other complexities that I'll be able to show you as I get into the demo of the Smartsheet technology. For example, um, anything related to pregnancy has to have the trimester 
documented and specifically uh, documented in the code that you're using. There's also this unique seventh character that many injury and trauma codes contain. And you'll see as I show you the technology how that's mitigated using the Smartsheet technology. So other than searching through 21 chapters of textbooks, what else is out there that can be used to help us associate the proper ICD-10 code to the current ICD-9 code. Many of you have heard of the GEMS mapping systems. Uh, Medicare provides us with one and there are other products on the market that rely upon GEMS, the general equivalent mapping software, which basically can help us get to the the specific code if there is an exact match, a one-to-one -one match, but many times, unfortunately, there's a one to an approximate match, and in many times, one to no match. And these are the areas that are very problematic when using a GEMS mapping program. I often use the analogy that a GEMS program can get us to the approximate neighborhood of the proper ICD-10 code so that you're not getting a rejected claim. It could often get us even to the right street within that neighborhood, but in many instances it fails to get us to the proper house, the exact address, the only address that's going to get that claim paid. That is where the smart sheet technology comes in, and you'll also see the other huge benefits of the smart sheet technology as they relate to our current natural behaviors in how we go through the billing process. There's not going to be anything intrusive with the workflow of your billing when you utilize the Smartsheet technology. And you'll see that again as we go through the demo. Aside from code selection, documentation is going to be a huge hurdle because during either pre or post audits, you're going to need to be demonstrating that you have not only chosen the most specific code, that's going to ultimately be the easy part, particularly using the Smartsheet technology, but making sure that your documentation matches that specificity. That's also a huge hurdle that physicians face as we move into October. The documentation is going to mandate that we are specific to the disease and the anatomical site, including laterality. We're going to have to document complications and manifestations. If we're dealing with obstetrics, as an example, you're going to need to document the trimester. And all of this, of course, is reliant upon the use of proper medical terminology. So documentation is a whole nother layer that gets involved with the complexity of these codes. And that's why, that's why if physicians thought meaningful use was daunting, PQRS was daunting, that's really a mere speed bump compared to the brick wall of ICD-10. Not meeting meaningful use or not complying with PQRS, merely you suffer penalties. Not complying with ICD-10, you've hit a brick wall of cash flow shutdown. So much more impactful is the compliance with ICD-10. One of the other challenges of ICD-10, as I sort of alluded to moments ago, is that much like meaningful use, much like PQRS, there's going to be another workflow disruption. I can't tell you how many times I hear physicians complaining about questioning who's taking care of the patients anymore. We are focusing so much on the various workflow disruptions that meaningful use and PQRS have caused. Now you're going to throw another uh, another gorilla in the room, and that's going to be ICD-10. And that's where the Smartsheet 10's patent-pending technology comes into play, and I'll demonstrate that shortly. So let's get into exactly how the Smartsheet works and all of its attributes associated with it. What you're looking at right now 
is the Smartsheet 10 database. On the left-hand side are codes that you can simply type in, and on the right-hand side is the actual database that's linked to CMS, and it's automatically updated every 30 days. It's linked to the actual chapters of CMS uh, of CMS's ICD-10 database. So initially here what I'm going to do is stick to the world that I'm very familiar with and that's the world of podiatry. I know the ICD-9 code for a Hallux valgus or a bunion so I'm going to type in 735.0 and you can see that automatically what it does on the right hand side of the screen it takes me to the precise chapter the exact neighborhood and the street if you will of Hallux valgus but notice how it comes up first just black M20.1 Hallux valgus acquired is black I'm forced to click until I find a green code all throughout the Smartsheet 10 technology, all that's involved is clicking until you find a green code. When you find the green code, you then are at the most specific code. Now, in this instance, the M20.10, which is actually unspecified, is an acceptable code, but we know better than to use an unspecified code. We know, by virtue of the other green codes listed here, that we need to select laterality. And once we do, on top of the screen, it will populate the laterality, the exact code of M20.11. And if this is integrated into your electronic health record, as it's integrated right now into TrackNet 3.0, this code will automatically populate the invoice of your EHR technology. It will do so by actually dual coding. And we're going to get to dual coding in a second and why that is so important that it allows for rules to be written to determine whether or not this should go down with an ICD-9 code or an ICD-10 code. We'll get to that in a second. So that's not all. That's the easy part. Let's suppose, once again, on the left-hand side, I know my ICD-9 code for a sprain of an ankle. So I go ahead and type it in. It automatically takes me on the right-hand side of the screen to the exact chapter of ankle sprain. But again, it comes up black. I know that I need to click until I find a green code. I'll do that in just a moment, but what I also want to point out here is that many of these chapters have additional information where you see underneath of the black code for ankle sprain, the excludes notes. This serves as an entire resource library. By just clicking that, it will give me the excludes one and excludes two codes notes that go with these codes so that I know what's included in this code and what's not should I need to know that but nevertheless if I go ahead and click on the laterality here I've reached the green code so I'm going to go ahead and click on right ankle but what pops up is an alert this is alerting me to the fact that this code if I had sent it down without a unique seventh character, it would have been rejected. This is alerting me to the fact that I need to select for this particular code, whether this is an initial encounter, a subsequent encounter, or a sequela. That's the unique seventh character. And when I do, it's actually going to add it right to my invoice screen, and this code is the only code that will get paid at this level of complexity. Let's suppose I didn't know an ICD-9 code. Of course, the search engine of the Smartsheet is capable of recognizing words. I can type in FRAC. I could type in fractured metatarsal. It's going to automatically take me again right to the chapter of fractured metatarsals, first being black. But as I click and I look for that green code, here again, I'm looking at the right foot. When I go to select that right foot fractured metatarsal, once again, a pop-up alert indicating that I need to add a unique seventh character to tell 
the carrier, if this is a closed fracture, an open fracture, is it a fracture of routine healing, delayed healing, non-union, malunion? If I didn't have this tool, I would have been rejected because I didn't know that a unique seventh character needed to be added. Once again, it adds it, and it's going to populate the invoice of your electronic health record. Now, that's still not all that the magic of the Smartsheet technology can do. What I'm about to cover is really, to me as a consultant, the most important piece of ICD-10, because as I said, ICD-10 is going to be one of the biggest workflow challenges that any physician has encountered. It's going gonna, it's gonna to tend to try to disrupt far more than meaningful use and PQRS, Yet, what we have in the Smartsheet 10 technology is actually a patent pending uh, feature of this software that allows an individual provider, not just the practice, but each individual provider to basically customize a super bill, an electronic super bill, based on that provider's most frequently used diagnosis. So the provider doesn't have to look at the entire database of the Smartsheet 10 technology. They can utilize a super bill much like they're accustomed to right now, much like their natural behavior right now. They simply can develop their own, and it takes literally seconds to develop their own super bill. So what I'm going to show you here on the right-hand side of your screen is the Smartsheet 10 technology coned down, funneled down right to a customized super bill that I developed. Now, in this case, I only used six CPT or six diagnosis codes. I could add any amount of diagnoses to my provider-specific super bill. Here, I've chosen only six. So, on the left-hand side of your screen, this could be your EHR invoice screen. Um, where, or it could be the search engine, as I showed you before, of the Smartsheet 10. Notice if I was going to choose dermatophytosis on the right-hand side of the screen here. This is my super bill, and now I'm faced with a patient with dermatophytosis of the foot. If I went and clicked my super bill on the right-hand side of the screen, it automatically populates for me the ICD-9, as well as the most specific ICD-10 code, simply because this being green shows that there is a one-to-one -one match between ICD-9 and ICD-10. Different, for example, than what you see here for Halix valgus. That's not green. That means it's not a one-to-one -one match. But Notice how it's green here, meaning it's a one-to-one -one match. It went ahead and populated my EHR invoice with both the ICD-9 and the ICD-10 code. That is dual coding. The importance of dual coding rests upon the fact that claims that are related to dates of service after October 1st, 2015, must be coded with ICD-10. But suppose this was a date of service that preceded October 1st. Even though we've passed October 1st, if the date of service preceded October 1st, this must go down with an ICD-9 code, not an ICD-10 code. So that's going to create a whole other level of confusion for billers and medical staff that Essentially, having the rules written in the EHR, it could automatically determine by date of service whether to submit this claim by the ICD-10 or by the ICD-9 code. It can even be rule written based upon carrier because not all carriers are going to be ready on October 1st. So if this was a workers' comp claim, for example, it automatically would know not to send the ICD-10 code, only send the ICD-9 code. So that's the essential critical point of dual coding that the Smartsheet 10 technology does for you. So now let's suppose this patient had Halix valgus. See what happens when I click on my provider customized super bill, Halix valgus is not green. It, it's going to force me to click once again 
and lo and behold it opens up the database just as you saw before right to the chapter of a black ICD-9 of an ICD-10 code that forces me to pick the laterality of Halix valgus and it then populates my super bill with the most specific ICD-10 code. So essentially your customized super bill is linked to the database when necessary, but yet you're not looking at all 68,000 ICD-10 codes. You can customize this to any amount that you want. That's going to salvage the workflow, the natural behavior that physicians are looking for in utilizing a super bill. A super bill in the world of ICD-10, if it was a paper super bill like we have in ICD-9, would be about 25 pages long. It would purely uh, eliminate the possibility of using a super bill, and that's going to be a big workflow disruption. Let's talk a little bit outside the world that I'm, uh, I'm familiar with, and, and let's, let's demonstrate some things that are really not podiatric. Here, if I had a patient uh, with pernicious anemia, and I typed in the word anemia, and I knew it was perni pernicious anemia, again, it's going to take me right to the chapter of vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. But notice that it's red. It's coming up red. I have to click until I find a green code, and it's then going to be more specific. It's going to be the code that is paid. If I was an obstetrician and I had a patient with placenta privia, and again, I knew that code, in order to convert it to ICD-10, it would automatically take me to the chapter, but I know I have to click until I find a green code, and clicking then gives me a choice of the trimesters, which is essential for being paid. If I was a general surgeon with abdominal pain and I knew the ICD-9 code, by using the Smartsheet 10 technology, I learned that I can't just have abdominal pain anymore. I have to specify the quadrant. It does it for me automatically, and this red will not turn green up on top here until I select the proper quadrant. As I said before, it's not just a mapping program that takes you to the exact house. It also is a vast library, resources such as the excludes notes, excludes ones and excludes two, are at your fingertips simply by clicking the technology. It's EHR agnostic. It can be, can, it can be integrated into any electronic health record technology, fully customizable, particularly that patent pending piece, and it's extraordinarily cost effective. When you look at the price of Smartsheet 10, and I'll, again, that's the big value proposition of TrackNet 3.0, it's embedded in there as part of the price of TrackNet 3.0, but even outside of TrackNet 3.0, having it embedded into electronic health record technologies, extremely cost effective when you think about the cost of rejected claims and the impact that that's going to have on, on the cash flow. So I hope that answers a lot of questions about the Smartsheet 10 technology. We, uh, we, we believe it's going to be the leading solution to mitigate the claim rejections and the cash flow crises. Thank you very much for attending this webinar.